Okay, here we go. This is fabricating a bird for roasting. So, first of all, I got my bird. I'm going to move it out of the way to show you the cutting board. Under the cutting board, you'd have a non slip mat. You need uh, right nearby a sandy bucket with your towel. Make sure that you sanitize your area with your sandy towel. You also have a deboning knife. And sometimes you want to use your cook's knife as well. And uh, occasionally, of course, uh, a steel's handy. This is my diamond steel. I kind of like that one. I have already uh, steeled my knife, so we're ready to go. Let's um, move over to the chicken. So um, the bird is going to drain the juices off and remove the giblets and the liver. The liver may be frozen and we'll use later. The giblets will be used for the stock pot, so we'll bring this over now. That's going to happen probably with the sorters if it's uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, here's some liver. It's a piece of fat that's inside the vent. Put your hand down here and forage around, see what you can find. Uh, dry the bird off, make sure it's not wet, because if a wet bird slides around, we don't like wet birds now, do we? No. So there you are. So there's a nice dry bird. And we, we would normally be using uh, multiple storage containers, and uh, the sorters would be picking up most of the stuff. But for the point of the demonstration, I'm going to leave this all on this half sheet pan so that you can see the finished product. Alrighty. So tray out the way for a moment and the first thing that you do is you take the dried bird put it on the counter and make a score this is the bird upside down here's the whole bird here's the bird upside down make a score from the neck down to the parson's nose straight down it right down its spine turn it sideways make a second decision above the oyster which is really if you look where the the leg is the oysters tucked in there so you make a score between there <clears throat> and that's your marker all right now it's really simple you remove both legs yeah okay so this is what you do cut through the skin don't cut through, any, through anything else just cut through the skin get down to that oyster that's that funny little muscle you'll find it in a second don't worry the first couple of attempts are hard and then you'll find it put your finger in there and draw it back and you just keep nicking away you don't cut through any bone watch it see you see that technique I pulled the leg back popped the uh, joint out of its socket didn't cut any bones and then I continue to cut down and here we have one leg I'm going to put it out off the screen for a second and then we're going to do the other side so there you go that's what it should look like there's your oyster hole and here is the carcass okay let's do that again turn it over cutting from the top through the skin not the leg turn it over a few more cuts through the skin get your tip of your blade in to catch the oyster you generally use your finger to feel the bone so we're going down through the oyster, pop, and then with the blade continue to cut. Don't worry, you're not going to do it this fast probably, but there you are. That's what kind of what we're looking for here. If you can get that piece of skin off too, that's great, but don't worry about it. It's no big deal. That's not what's important. What's important is taking the leads off intact. Okay, so then yeah, we're going to put this back over out of the screen, bring back the uh, leg, and then we're going to separate the thigh from the drumstick. The drumsticks are going to go just as they are to the sorters. So here, right here, is the joint. You'll find it just by wobbling around in there and then cutting through the joint. I have not cut through any bones. Okay, so there is one thigh. There's a drumstick that's going to go just like that off to be taken care of. And then again, so where it moves, that's the joint. You're going to cut through that joint where it wobbles. Yeah, let's show it on the other side. You can see it a little bit better. You'll be looking for a particular pocket of fat. You're not going to find it. 
what you're going to find is where it moves. So wherever it moves, that's where you want to cut through. There. So there's the drumstick again. Those two drumsticks are finished now. Out of our hair. Then we're going to remove the uh, thigh bone. So that's really easy. You score down either side of the thigh with the tip of the blade. Remember this is just a chicken, but the turkey's a lot bigger, so it, therefore it should be easier for you. And don't worry, just try and get as much off as you can. Don't have a cow, man. What we don't want is to leave chunks of bone in there. So if you've got a piece of bone, I can see a piece right there, then we want to cut that out. It's going to go in a stock pot. So you remove it like that. Here we have a boneless thigh. You can take the bit of skin off if you want. It really isn't that important. For me, it's actually better to leave the skin on. One boneless thigh. Lovely. Screen. Take this. Here. Let's do that again. Scoring either side. Around. scrape it if you want use the heel end of the blade if you are going to scrape and one bone off don't like look there's a, look at the meat that's on that dear oh dear how terrible so there you go even i'm sloppy there so don't be intimidated and once again the joint that's hanging on that's a bit of a kneecap right there Ugh. so that's going and then we have the skin on thigh finished Um, next thing you're going to do is take the first two wing joints off and put that in the stock pot. First joint, second joint. So these guys, you just cut off, very simply, cutting through the joint, not the bone. And there you have the first two joints. That's going straight in the stock pot. First joint, second joint. Hold it up. You can snap it if you want and you can see it. And then straight through. Two, two first joint wings away. We're left with the drumstick. We're going to take the drumette off and give that to the uh, sorter as well. So cutting from underneath because it's easier to get to the joint from there. And straight through. There. Bob's your uncle. And again. Cutting down from the bottom end. Straight through the joint. Try not to take too much breast meat off. There's your other one. And we actually serve these. I roast them off and they're kind of a fun thing for somebody to have. Okay. And now we're going to finally remove the breast. There's a wishbone in here, and I like to get to it before we remove the breast. So what I do is I cut down with the tip of the blade. Put my finger in here. See if I can release it with my hand. Not always possible, but in, with a chicken it tends to be. And I've actually done it. You can see it right now. There's the wishbone. I just scored either side of it with the blade and then with my fingertip released the flesh going back underneath and if you're wiggling a squiggle you can generally get it out into ah oh, broke it <gasps> I'll never get that wish that's terrible that's all right don't matter but if you get it out your way it makes it a lot easier for when you're taking the breast off okay so there here's a broken wishbone oh so many lost wishes Okay. Then the last thing that we do is take the breast off, cutting down the sternum, that's the chest bone, straight through. Now it's because the wishbone's out of your hair, man, you can cut straight down through here and get a nice slice. So we're going to take it off of the bone. It's going to be a boneless breast. And we cut from the neck to the tail end because that's the way the ribs go. So the ribs go like this, so you want to cut like that. If you do it the other way, you're going to snag. All right. Follow around. Fiddly, fiddly. Get to this joint here. And there. There's one breast off. Same again here. This is the sternum right here. That's your breast plate right there. So there we go, going back, going down, and there. 
So there we have moderately clean, you know, not not a work of art. There's a bit of meat there, and uh, don't don't uh, don't worry about it. This is gonna make some great gravy. Um, we recommend that you cut the carcass in half for the for the uh, uh, turkey. So you're just gonna cut it straight down the middle. We'll use a bigger knife for that. So we're gonna use a cook's knife, and then I am gonna make a pretty drastic cut. And the only reason why we do this is to, uh, and you don't have to cut down the spine, you can cut either side. The whole idea is to make it a size that will fit into the stock pot. That's all. Otherwise you've got these great big carcasses floating out the top and then you don't really have room for them all. Okay, so. The other bones breast. So, I'm going to bring this over. Wipe the water in a little bit. All that goopy stuff out of the way. And here we have the carcass. Doesn't have to cut up anyway, it really doesn't matter. There's a little bit of liver. Save the liver. There's some fat, which would be great for schmaltz, making the, we can make uh, gravy with that fat. Uh, here's the two boneless thighs. Two wings, these are going in the stock pot along with these bones over here. Two drumsticks, they're going to be roasted just like that. Here's the two little, look at these, just like little baby drumsticks, so cute. And the boneless breasts. Notice the skin is still attached. We want the skin attached because when you're roasting something, you want to try and keep as much of the skin on to keep the moisture in there and use the natural fat that's in there to baste it. All right, there you go, Bob's your uncle. And we've just got 1,500 pounds of these normally, so uh, off you go.